In Scrabble, the end game is truly a magical time, featuring a wide range of potential soul-crushing blunders, but also incredibly creative maneuvers and strategies you won't see at any other time in the game. Every now and then, a Scrabble endgame comes along that showcases something completely different and crazy, and I've got a fantastic example to show you today. It's a game between two longtime top expert players, Nathan Benedict and Stefan Rao, from a tournament held back in 2005. The year is actually a very important detail, as you'll soon see. In the mid-game, Nathan has a solid lead and appears to be close to a bingo, holding an S and low point tiles. But after playing his top move of Nice, Stefan bingos on three straight turns, using the first blank with Surveil for 78, the second blank with Ensurfed for 86, and following up with Cresting for 62 to seize command of the game. Heading into the end game, Nathan's in deep trouble, facing a 75 point deficit with just two tiles remaining in the bag. His only good news is that one of those tiles is the Q. Because this game took place in 2005, Chi was not yet a valid word in North American play. From Nathan's POV, the only play Stefan can play his Q is through the A of out gains with Cat. And because there are three unseen T's to Nathan, if Stefan has the Q on his rack, he must necessarily also have at least one T. So Nathan cleverly decides to dump off his A for eight points, blocking the spot for Cat and making life more difficult for Stefan. Nathan could draw the Q himself, but if that happens, he'll be doomed anyway, so he needs to proceed as if Stefan already has the Q. Nathan then draws an E, leaving one tile in the bag. Stefan answers with Hellet for 32, his top scoring move, pushing his lead up to 99 points. Computer analysis suggests that Hellet wins 100% of the time, putting him up by more than enough to withstand being stuck with an unplayable Q. Nathan isn't going to go down without a fight. He starts the end game with Al for just two points. This doesn't look like much, but it sets up G's hooking Ale for 75 points, which would make things much more interesting. Still, Stefan has an easy way to block it, Alt for three points, which he correctly plays. At this point, the game looks lost for Nathan, and he decides to play off one tile at a time to cut his margin of defeat. He plays of for 7 points, and Stefan answers with ut for 6. Nathan then prepares to play one of his E's, and he has a spot to score 10 points with it, hooking by. But, looking at the board upside down, he makes a blunder and accidentally plays ed for 7, forming the invalid two-letter word eb, which he reads upside down as be. Stefan notices the mistake just in time to challenge the word off before making his next move, dropping his N for 6 more points. Stefan is down to just his Q, but he's up by 105 points. Take a moment to see if you can figure out what Nathan plays here. Nathan responds with the jaw-dropping move of IT for 2 points, revealing his master plan. This move sets up an 84-point outplay of G's hooking Zit, generating 60 points from the Z alone. Stefan is powerless to stop it, holding just his Q, and is forced to pass. And after Nathan plays G's, he collects an extra 20 points from Stefan's Q and winds up winning this game by 1 point, 428 to 427. This sequence would be amazing enough on its own, but it actually gets crazier. Let's go all the way back to Nathan's play of his A for 8 points. As I mentioned, this play blocks Cat, the only move that allows Stefan to play his Q, but it also gives Nathan a chance to draw the pivotal second E, which he needs to play G's. Although Stefan easily blocks Nathan's first G's setup, Nathan still has the ability to make his second even stronger setup. 
The problem is that any of Stefan's consonants can easily block this one too, hooking nit or tit. So Nathan needs to keep the relevant tiles for his setup on his rack while getting Stefan to play his last three consonants. When Nathan plays of, he's hoping that Stefan will play both of his N and T with something like nit, leaving him with just the Q. But when Stefan plays only one tile instead, Nathan is forced to improvise. This is what makes Nathan's play of ebb such a stroke of genius. Remember, tournament Scrabble players use turntable boards. When it's not your turn, you're looking at the board upside down. Every now and then, especially under time pressure, players will make mistakes like this, misreading the upside down board. Nathan actually played this move with the board still oriented towards Stefan, making his supposed mistake look even more plausible. In reality, it was a calculated strategy to induce Stefan to play his final consonant, leaving him helpless to block the 84-point bomb. Stefan's clock had less than one minute remaining, making it extremely difficult for him to figure out what Nathan was up to, and that in fact, his best move was simply to pass his turn back to Nathan, holding on to his end as an insurance against the setup. This endgame has a lot in common with another one I've covered between Nigel Richards and Harshan Lamabadu Surya. Stefan and Harshan both had a chance to win their respective games by detecting their opponent's plan before it happened and choosing to pass their turns instead of playing tiles. But both players had little time left on their clocks to work through such complicated positions. And for the record, yes, this series of moves is a little bit evil from Nathan. Playing a phony intentionally, actually hoping that your opponent will challenge it off, might rub some of you the wrong way. I'm not sure I would do it myself, but I still absolutely love it. It's completely within the rules, and it's an amazingly creative way to steal an unwinnable game. I am curious what you all think, though, so leave a comment with your thoughts. Regardless, Scrabble endgames like this don't come up very often, but when they do, it's truly a sight to behold. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.